Download free Gazan files from ambitious.co.za slash laser dash art. Just click on the link in the details below and enjoy. Laser Artworks is a dedicated program for first time users. And what better way to learn than following step by step laser projects from scratch to final products. To follow along, I invite you to download the vector designs that we have for you free of charge that we're going to be using. Once you have done that, simply just like and subscribe to the channel and you'll automatically receive notifications on new laser art projects to follow. It's fun, it's progressive, it's empowering, so just go for it. So I've downloaded my vector file and from there I'm going to take this and put it into a new page where I can size it correctly to see how big I'm going to be going on my coaster. Now that we've got our vector on our page here we're going to need a physical border to show us that this is actually going to be a round coaster. So let's make this smaller and then make us a round border. Make sure to have your border see-through and have a line around the edge so that we can at least place it in the middle where we want it. Now that we've done that, we can now center our design. If we want to make it completely the same size as the circle, we just need to make it bigger. If not, you can leave it smaller, however you want it to look. From here we can then vectorize it or it's already vectorized you put it into a program that you've got that has an editable version to do vectors otherwise go from here change it into a vector and then we go to our next step I did not do my artwork in a vector based program I moved over to Photoshop now I'm going to take it to Adobe then convert it to a vector file and export it as a DXF since I didn't use this free vector in a vector program, I've used it in Photoshop first and now I'm converting it back to Adobe and from there I'm going to vectorize it and then I'm going to export it as a DXF. Please keep in mind to make sure that your object that you're saving is ungrouped and make sure that there isn't any hidden layers otherwise it will cause issues later. Once you've selected your artwork and you've vectorized it ready, then we can go to export, export as, and change it to DXF. And just make sure that you keep it to a one-to-one -one ratio, keep it as a PNG, and then preserve all art line and text. We can now open the program that you are using to laser engrave with. I will be using TrueCut because that's the machine that I have. Now that our program is open, we can now import our design that we have just saved as a DXF. Now that our design is opened up in our laser cutting program, the first thing you're going to need to do is remove your outer border. And the reason you want to do that is because we created a solid color border in our design program and now that you vectorize it, it reads it as separate lines instead of one. So it's up to you. You can either choose inside or outside to delete. I'm choosing to delete the inside so that I've got a little bit of a gap around my laser artwork that we're going to be engraving. From here, you can select what you want to be cut and what you want to be engraved. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select the outer border and change it to another color of choice. We're going to just go with purple so that we can have a differentiate between the two layers. Now, if you want to, you can select any of the inside as to be a certain color, but please keep in mind when you do select, make sure to select all the pieces and not leave any open. It is much easier just to select the outer border which we're going to be using as our cut line and change that and leave the inners as black. Now that we've selected the outside circle, we want to reselect it and 
go to our layer options in the top right hand side. Now you're going to want to select your layer and make sure that the purple is actually cut and not scan or engrave. Please also make sure that your purple is a secondary item in terms of your list of what needs to be done first. You always want to engrave first then cut. If you cut the object first the blower pipe might sometimes move your object that you've just cut and your engraving will become obscure or incorrect. So now that we've done that we want to also make sure that our black layer is also chosen to be engrave or scan. From there you're going to need to adjust your settings. For the cut settings I'm going to be going with a speed of 20. Work accuracy I'll leave at around 50 and my power I'm going to drop down to 65. Please keep in mind that I'll be using a 100 watt power supply so your settings might differ and you might need to play around a little bit. But these are pretty much a good setting to stay with. Try not to go anything faster than 30 when cutting 3mm MDF which we'll be using today. Otherwise you'll be going too fast and it just won't cut through. Now that we've selected that and made sure that our blow mode is always on and we've got our process which is only one because we only wanted to cut it once, we say OK. From there we need to do our engraving settings. We want to always make sure that our bi-directional and engrave blow is on at all times. From there your machine speed might differ. I'm going to go with 500. Your machine might be between 300 and 700 max speed power. You can always contact the sales team so that they could provide you with that information. I'm going to be going with 500 speed and my power at 45. I don't want it to go too deep. I just want it to be deep enough that we can see the difference between our raw wood that hasn't been engraved and our wood that has been engraved. If you go too light, the color might look exactly the same. So we want to go a little bit deeper than the first layer of the wood to make sure that it looks a bit burnt so that we have a color contrast. I use my scan gap at 0.03. You can put it to anywhere between 0 0.1 and 0 0.05. From there we're going to make sure our process is 1 and we can say OK. Now that we've done our settings we can then select our object by dragging a square over it and we're going to make sure that our size is correct. Either you can check the size by right clicking on it and pushing size or viewing the size bar at the top left if you're using AudioWorks. So here we can see our size is 85 millimeters in both directions and I'm happy with that so I'm going to push OK. If you want it bigger or smaller please make sure to adjust it yourself and also make sure that you're adjusting it proportionately. If you're using AudioWorks make sure that you've got your proportional tab locked on or off depending on what you want to do. I'm going to push OK. From there we're going to make sure it's selected properly and we can then download or start our job. Today I'm going to be using my cabinet laser, my 1.3 by 900 and the program I'm going to be using is TrueCut to cut my design and engrave and the material that I'm going to be using is 3mm MDF. I'm just going to use a bit of a scrap that I had left over from another job which is perfectly fine for our test today. We're just going to load this in. We just put it anywhere that you choose and we want to make sure that our head height is correct to our media. Now depending on which machine you have is going to be depending on which way you're going to be doing it. I will be using my ruler with the magnet sensor. I can also do it manually so I'm going to do both just for you. First step I want to do is make sure that my head has clearance over my material. If your material is too thick and your bed is too far up, you obviously need to then bring it down accordingly before moving your head over. As you can see, I'm dropping it down just for example sake. 
So the first method we're going to be doing is manual. Now with the provided piece of acrylic that comes with your machine, this is 20 mils. So this will tell us that we need to be 20 mils distance from head height to material. And the easiest way to do that is just by leaving it underneath while you slowly adjust the height of your bed until that piece of acrylic is sitting either just underneath your nozzle or it is sitting just snug enough for you to just pull it out. It moves in and out easily but also has a bit of a snug fit. Now that is how you do it manually with your machine and there you'll be able to see it is perfect that way. Next option available is the automatic. If you have this available option to you, the easiest way to do it is take any piece of metal. I have a ruler that was provided to me with the machine. You want to place it nice and directly underneath your magnet. And we're going to push our Z-axis re zero to make sure that it can then pick up our magnet. And as you see, it picked up the metal ruler and now it's set to 20 mils and just to make sure if you're not certain you can take your measurement and put it next to it to see if you're happy and there we are our head has been adjusted to the heart of our material so now we can go from here to our computer and we can push download or cut directly to start our job but before we do that we need to make sure that our head is exactly where we want it so we know where to start cutting so for that I'm just going to move it to an open area. I'm not really particular about where. I just need to move it so that I know when we're ready we can at least just start cutting from that position. So I've reopened my program and I'm about to load in my job and there it is there. Exactly how we had it earlier when we were setting it up. All the hard work has been done already. We have selected our cut layer and our engrave layer. And we've also made sure that we have our cut layer as secondary and our engrave is first. We want to make sure that our engraving is done first so that the coaster doesn't move out of place while the blower on the head doesn't move it and then we have issues later on. So first thing we're going to need to do is drag a box over our artwork to make sure that we've got everything selected. And from there we can either push start or download. For me, I prefer downloading it to my laser engraver so that if I need to move my head, I can. But if you're very confident that your head is exactly where you want it to be to start going, you can just push start and it will go as is. So here I'm going to push download and I'm just going to give it a name, Lion Coaster, push OK, then it will download to your engraver. So let's go over to the panel and have a look. Once your design has been saved to your laser machine, we can then go to our file and we can see we've got a bunch of file names here, but we've just named ours Lion Coaster. So I'm going to push enter to select that one and we're going to push escape. Always make sure that your settings on here say 100% because we've adjusted our power and speed settings on the program to make sure that we want it how we need it to be. So in this case, I'm going to just quickly head on over here and I'm gonna change that to 100. And now we're ready to go. Next step is to make sure that our extraction unit is on and our blower and chiller is also activated. Otherwise, nothing is going to happen. We have our chiller here. Make sure that is on, otherwise you'll have some serious problems with your tube or your machine won't start at all if you have a flow sensor. Next is your air pump. Now that air pump sits next to the head over here. And now this will blow out any of debris that is sitting here that prevents you from engraving and also snuffs out any flames that will occur during the cutting process, which I will go over in a bit. We can check our final one, which is our extraction unit. And once we've pushed this and this is ready to snuff out any of the fumes, we can then push start on our control panel and watch magic happen.
Now once you've pulled it out of your laser engraver, I highly recommend giving it a good nice wipe down to see how your product has come out. Now I've just got a normal cloth here with some water and sunlight soap and all I'm going to do is just give it a good wipe to get rid of any of the excess powder from the engraving process. And once you've done that, you don't have to worry about being too wet, just give it a nice good clean. And look at that, came out really, really well. One thing that you've got to keep in mind when you're doing projects like this, when you're having a look at it and giving it a nice inspection, if you see within your engraving that it almost looks a bit blurry, then your alignments on your mirrors are out, which is a very simple fix. If your engraving has come out just like this one and it's got nice, clean and crisp lines, then you know your setup and your alignments on your mirrors are done correctly. And you've got a coaster that was done really, really well. Have a look at that. I think it came out really, really well. So guys, thank you for watching. And if you really enjoyed this video and you would like to see more in the future, please like, maybe subscribe. And if you feel like leaving us a comment, your opinions do really matter to us. And see you in the next one. At am.co.za, we have always taken pride in our products and customer service. Our Google rating represents our commitment to providing our clients with the best support possible. We have officially achieved a rating of 4.9 stars and an astounding 699 reviews for our Jet Park branch in Johannesburg at the end of 2020. Klobosili Kumalo, a level 6 local guide who has 64 reviews all over the country says, the tech support team is on point. I had an issue with my machine. I called them and they said I must bring it in. The person who helped me checked everything and made sure everything was 100%. Kind staff members helped me load my machine in and out of my car. This was just one of the many appreciative reviews we have received. These tags mean a lot to us. Thank you so much for your support. Let's move our attention to our branch in Montague Gardens of Cape Town, where we have achieved a rating of 4.8 stars and an amazing 299 reviews. Level 7 reviewer Dash Somalu, who has 119 reviews on Google, says, Great company, great products and very well-priced items. The training we received from Messias Chunga was top-notch. He was very knowledgeable and knows his stuff. Another satisfied customer amongst many. We would like to thank you, our loyal customers. Thank you, South Africa. am.co.za. Achievement matters.